All right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Hey, this is the day that the Lord have made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning to you. Thank you so much for tuning in to, in, to uh, in the backyard with Pastor Perryman. Hey, listen, we had some challenges trying to get on this morning. Uh, a little mechanical problems we had this morning with our stands and stuff like that. So y'all forgive us. But hey, one of our stands broke. So we're going to end up having to... Uh, Get another stand today. All right, so we can get moving. All right. Hey, shout out to my Instagram audience. Shout out to those who are watching us uh, on Facebook Live. Good to see you guys this morning. Miss Michelle, good to see you this morning. Kelly Johnson, good to see you. David Nicholson, good to see you, man. Tiffany Barnes is on. Byron Williams is on. Miss C.P. Little is watching. Hey, my wife, Pastor Sophia, is watching this morning. Shout out to you. Thank you so much for tuning in today. I uh, appreciate you guys. Listen, y'all share, y'all like, y'all tag, y'all invite. Get other people to come on this morning be a part of In the Backyard with Pastor Perryman, all right? Shout out to Kaylin Kennegrew, who's on this morning. Miss Emma Howard is on this morning. Hey, shout out to Miss Sherika Nicole, who's on this today. Good to see you, Miss Juanita Carter. It's a pleasure to have you, too. Thank you so much for being on. Miss Shirley Powell is watching today. Miss Danita Hines is watching today. Good to see you this morning. Listen, uh, before we get started, I do want... Hey, my daughter Ashley Perryman is watching. Shout out to you, sweetheart. Love you. Good to see you this morning. Uh, appreciate you for tuning in. Listen, hey, I, I, before we get started, I want to give my condolences out to the Powell family uh, for the loss of their sister, the loss of their, aunt, their auntie, Miss C.P. Little's auntie, uh, went home to be with the Lord a few days ago. Uh, shout out to the family. Keep them in prayer. And uh, it's actually Miss Irene Holmes' sister who went home to be with the Lord. And uh, so y'all keep the family in prayer. The family has been uh, devastated by this and has been, the family has been under attack. All right, so y'all keep the family in prayer, right? I greatly appreciate y'all for it. Remember, on In the Backyard, we don't just come along on here just to talk to you about the Word of God, but we come to encourage people as well and to let people know that, hey, we're with them in their situation, all right? So shout out to Miss Diane King. Good to see you this morning, too. But listen, let's get into it, to it. We're a little late this morning because uh, our system... Um, stands didn't work right. So shout out to, to everybody who's on our Instagram audience. Shout out to Brent. Good to see you, man. But let's get to it. You know, when I was a kid growing up in Mississippi, you know, our church was named Pleasant Grove Missionary Baptist Church. For those who grew up in the IBM, they understand that our church was deep in the country. And uh, our church had a graveyard in the back. And I mean, uh, and I believe that graveyard may have been there since the 1800s because of uh, the grass had grew up so much over the graveyard that there were some graves you couldn't see. And I remember my grandfather used to go out there and sometimes he and other deacons of the church would uh, tear down the wooded area and, and they would see graves back there that they hadn't seen in many years. But my grandfather and my grandmother were the treasures of the church. And by them being the treasures of the church and the, the old school church that they were part of, they didn't believe putting, in, putting money in the banks. So what they would do is they had a strong box and the offerings that came in to the church went into the strong box. Now, you know, it couldn't have been that much of money if it was in a strong box and the strong box was up under my grandparents' bed. I never forget one Sunday we come in from church and uh, my grandmother hands me the money in this little envelope. And she says to me, Chris, go put this in the strong box under my bed. And she gives me some keys. I don't understand what she's giving me keys for because I'm like five or six years old. And I go grab this gray steel looking strong box out from under her bed. I pull it out and I'm confused. And the reason that I'm confused is because I had never seen a lock before. I heard of locks on the doors, but I had never seen a lock that you stick a key in and the top part flips open. I never saw that before. So I'm struggling in there trying to get this thing open and I'm in there for a few moments and my grandmother says, Chris, what are you doing? I said, I'm trying to get in this box. And she comes in and she says, the strong box has a key to it. I had never understood that before. And so then she takes the key, she sticks the key into the lock, turns it and the locks open. And I thought like, wow, I've been trying to get into this box for so long. <laughs> and I didn't realize that I had a key to it all the time. And there are many of you right now that you're trying to get into the strong box, the treasure box of God. <laughs> you've been trying to get your healing. You've been trying to get your deliverance. You've been trying to get your peace. You've been trying to get your prosperity. You've been trying to get everything that God has in store for you. You've been trying to get it. But what you've been doing is you have not been using the key that God has given you. 
You've been using your education. You've been using your experiences. You've been using your skill set. You've been using everything but the key that God has given you. For some of you, you think that networking is the key to get you in the open door. But the reality is God has already given you a key. And the key is the Holy Spirit. <laughs> when you tap into the Holy Spirit, when you allow the Holy Spirit to be your leader, when you allow him to be your teacher, when you allow him to be your guide, he reveals things to you that only God knows. The Bible says he, when he speaks, he does not speak of things concerning himself, but he speaks of things concerning God. He reveals to you your future. He reveals to you what it is that God has in store for you. And so many people have been struggling and working hard and grinding to make ends meet but you have not realized that God has given you a key and the key that God has given you unlocks every door. The Holy Spirit is the master key. He unlocks every door. But what the Holy Spirit needs from you and I today is to be people who would tap into him, to be people who would listen to him, to be people who would follow his instruction because he knows what's good for you. He knows what's best for you. He knows where God is trying to take you. He knows the heart of God. He has it. And all he needs for you and I to do is to tap into the wisdom of God because once we tap into the wisdom of God, the Bible calls it the manifold wisdom of God. And the manifold wisdom of God is that God has wisdom for every situation and every circumstance that you have. And so what you have to do is utilize the key that he has given you. The Holy Spirit knows how to unlock every door. And once God has given you the key, you're going to find out that ain't nothing that you cannot do. You're going to find out that you'll start sleeping better. You're going to find out that you'll start resting better. You're going to find out that everything will come a little bit easier for you because you tapped into the wisdom of God. The Bible calls it the manifold wisdom or the all sufficiency power of God is now made available to you because you have now tapped into the wisdom of God. So now when you utilize the key that is the Holy Spirit, your next key is that you got to use is your faith. <laughs> See, all of the promises of God has got to be received by faith. None of the promises of God are received by feeling. None of the promises of God are received by flesh. Scripture tells us in Galatians chapter number three, uh, verse number 13, it says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, curses everyone that hangeth on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through faith. And then the Bible said that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now watch now, when he says receive the promise of the Spirit, he's saying you and I receive the Holy Spirit by promise through faith. We receive it by faith. He didn't say we had to get on the altar and tear it all night long. He said we receive it by faith. Because watch now, if God gave me something as a free gift, why make me work for it by making me get on the altar and tear it all night long? And then if I don't get it that night, and you, you didn't get it tonight, but you'll get it tomorrow. No, no, no. He gave it to me as a free gift. But watch now. That's a universal principle that says every promise of God is received by faith. Not one, not two, not three, not four, but every promise of God is received by faith. So watch now. The next key for me to use is the faith key. I got to utilize the faith key. I have to believe what God said, even though I don't know how he's going to do it. I have to trust his word, even when I don't understand how it's going to work for me. I have to believe that he healed me, even though the doctor has given me a bad report. I still got to believe that. I got to trust and believe that God knows how to make my crooked path straight. I got to trust and believe that. I got to trust and believe that when God tells me to sow a certain seed, that he knows exactly what he's doing. I got to believe that. Yesterday, we in service yesterday, and here I am, I'm listening to my man of God preach, and I'm sitting there, and I'm hearing him preach, and I'm on my feet, but I also hear God speak to me about a seed to sow to him. <laughs> it, this, ain't a, this ain't a $20 seed, a $100 seed. We, we, talking about, we talking about some major cash here, and I'm sitting here, I'm looking, and I'm saying to, my, saying to myself, we, we gotta get a seed in the ground because we believe in God for our new builder. Hey, I got, my, I got the people of our church, supporting and sowing and giving but man i got to put a seed on this thing so that god can do some amazing things for us so here i am i lean over to my wife i said honey i think we ought to sow a seed today for this for our new building we believe god for the new building but we got to sow a seed and she said yeah you're right i said uh, how much you think we ought to sow she said i don't know what do you think god is saying so I tell her the number. I tell her what God is saying. She said, yeah, let's do that. This ain't no $100, $200, $300, $400, $500 seed. This major seed. This major seed now. So here I am. My man of God is preaching. And I'm one of them guys. If God tells me to do something at that moment, guess what I'm about to do? I'm about to get up and go do it. I ain't waiting on the offering plate. I ain't waiting on him to stop preaching. I'm rolling right then and there. I roll up to him while he's preaching. 
and he sees me coming. He know, he know if I'm coming, it's come, I'm coming for a reason. He turns his microphone on and lean over to me. I tell him, I say, hey, Dad, I want to sow this significant seed to you today because I'm believing God for a new church building for my church. And I got to step out in faith. And I said, can I do that? He said, you could do that right now, son. So all of a sudden, I said, we cash out the seed to you right now. And so we, we tell him how much it is. And he looks at us. He said, that's a significant seed. And he, we walk, I walk back, and I'm getting ready to cash out the seed to him. And he says to me, God has just told me to tell you. <laughs> Boy, I feel like running right now. He said, God just told me to tell you that you're going to have exactly what it is you're looking for. And he's going to do it through, he's going through, he gonna do it through many different means. He's going to raise up people you don't know. He's going to bring people to support you and to help you. And you're going to get what you ask God for. And he says to me, but the Lord told me to tell you, don't say that the people won't support you. Don't let those words come out of your mouth. God's going to raise up people to help you. So guess what he's doing? He's activating my faith because he understands that I cannot receive anything if I don't work the principle. So here I am. I got to work the faith principle to believe, but I also got to work the seed sowing principle. But not only that, but I also got to work the obedience principle because God knows exactly what to do. And many of you fall short because you are trying to make these things work without God. He's giving you a key that would unlock his treasure box. And for so many of you, you're not working on it. You're not utilizing the key. <laughs> for some of you, you, you got to tap into the Holy Spirit. He's a key. <laughs> Your faith is a key. <laughs> Your seed is a key. <laughs> Your obedience is a key. Because if God tells you to give a certain amount of money it, to any minister, to any service or whatever, God is not trying to take anything from you. But what God is trying to do, he's trying to get something to you. And for some of you, God drops a major number in your spirit and you, you push back and you start saying, was that me? Was that God or was that the devil? Let me help you today so you can eliminate and know who it is who's speaking to you today. <laughs> when it comes down to asking you to give a major seed so you'll know. First of all, it's not a seed you wanted to give anyway. So you know it wasn't you who was talking. Second of all, you know the devil ain't going to tell you to do something to defeat his kingdom. So you know that wasn't him. So that leaves one other individual and that one person is God. See, God knows exactly what to do. Many of you could come out of overdraft in your bank accounts if you were to sow seed on a continuous basis. You got to work principles. You got to work these principles. You got to take the key and you got to utilize the key. See, listen to this. God can never do anything outside of your obedience and there are many people god has spoken to you and told you to do something but you refuse to get out of your boat you refuse to get out of your boat and walk on your water of faith and because you refuse to get out of the boat and walk on the water of faith you never see god do the miraculous you never see him do miracles you never see him do supernatural things in your life because of fear fear is the thief of courage fear will rob you of everything that god has in store for you and I came to encourage you this morning, stop trying to stress out. Stop trying to struggle to get your doors open. Stop trying to get into the treasure box without the key that God gave you. The scripture tells us that it gives him good pleasure to give us the keys to the kingdom. He gave you the keys to the kingdom. That's why Jesus died. He didn't just die for you just to be saved. You have to open up salvation and, de and define what salvation is. You have to break salvation open. Salvation means to be sweetly saved. It, I mean, it doesn't mean to be sweetly saved. But salvation means, it's the Greek word soteria. It means soundness. It means preservation. It means wholeness. It means peace. It means prosperity. It means to live a full and enjoyable life. That's what God has called you and I to do. To live a full and enjoyable life. He did not call you to live a life. That is void of peace and void of prosperity. Some of you, your peace is under attack today. And you're wondering why. Why is my peace under attack today, Pastor? Because you're about to go to the next level. The devil knows how to raise up somebody. He knows how to bring people out of nowhere to attack you when you, when you, are, when you are enjoying yourself, when you are happy, when you are at your most excited moment, when you are at your highest point in life. He'll bring somebody to come against you. And you got to be careful that you don't fall prey to it. Why is that, Pastor? Because they become the sign that says you're about to be elevated. The scripture said the more they afflicted the children of Israel, the more they multiply. you got to be able to use this key. And this key is the key of rejoicing. When you start rejoicing, <laughs> I'm talking to somebody today. When you start rejoicing, what you doing? You're telling the devil that I'm not giving in to your talk. Or your I'm not giving in to any of that. I'm not going to let you talk me out of this. I'm not going to let you tell me that I cannot make it. I'm not going to let you talk me out of this. You just told me that I'm about to go to my next. I'm about to go to my next. I'm telling you, for many of you today, you need to.
to be able to put on different glasses so you can see differently. <laughs> yeah. At church, my, my man of God created this song. In his hands, it's already done. In his hands, it's already done. Uh, look, you got to already remember, this thing is already done. It's already done done. The devil is trying to get you to throw in the towel. You've been working keys all of your life. You've been sowing seed. You've been obedient to God. You've been faith in it. You've been coming to church. You've been on fire for God. You've been working in the house of God. You've been doing certain things. Listen to this. You are about to go to your next. It's already done. He gave you the keys to his strong box. Now utilize the keys and open it up and watch what you're going to find in there. You're going to find God's good treasure. <laughs> You're going to find your healing is in there, your deliverance in there, your peace is in there, your prosperity is in there, your hope is in there, your wellness is in there. Everything you need is already in that box. You got to open this thing up and you got you to use the keys that God has given you to open it up. I'm telling you today, man, when you use the Holy Spirit as a key, <laughs> he, he's the master key of all keys. He knows exactly what to do. But you're going to have to use that key of faith. That key of faith now helps you to walk out what God has already told you. You know, some of y'all talking like you say. You act, you talk say. You, you come to church, you dress say. You got the Christianese down pat. You got it down pat. You know how to speak the Christianese language. But the reality is you're not walking by faith at all. You're walking by feeling. See, if Migos could come along and say, you got to walk it like you talk it. Listen to this. As a Christian, you got to walk it like you talk it. If you talk it, you need to walk it because there is demonstration behind you believe it. If you believe, if you believe, if you believe, you got to walk this thing out. If you believe you healed, you got to get up and act like you healed. If you believe that you delivered, you got to act like you delivered. If you believe that you're a successful business owner, you got to act like you're a successful business owner. You cannot sit idly by and just say, God's going to do it. He's going to work everything out for me. And you don't partner with him. No, he needs your faith, baby. Your faith invites God into your life because he cannot do anything for you unless you invite him in. And so many people are not inviting him in today. You're trying to figure this thing out on your own and you can't do it without him. You got to walk it out. You got to walk it out today. So you got to use the Holy Spirit as a key. He's the master key. <laughs> you got to use faith as a key. You got to use your obedience as a key. You got to use your seed sown as a key. Scripture tells us that when you give, God gives back to you on a press down, shaking together, running over measure. He gives back to you on that level. He takes you to another level when you decide that I'm going to put a seed on this. Now, you know what? When we sowed that significant seed yesterday, guess what Reverend did? Reverend walked back to the seed with, with weights lift off of him. Why is that? Because I believe that we have in this building by the end of the month. I'm believing that. I'm stressing my faith out. I'm believing that. I'm trusting beyond the shadow of doubt. My seed is a sign that we're going to have it, that we're going to our next because it's already done. I'm encouraging you today. Follow the principles of God. Utilize the keys that he has given you. Don't miss the steps. Once you have sold your seeds, you got to water your seed. And how you water your seed is through praise and worship. It's fertilizer to the seed. If you just cast the seed and you don't water it, you don't fertilize it, guess what it won't do? It won't grow to produce what you want it to produce. So you got to sow that seed because it's a key. But then you got to come along and you got you to water that seed. You water that seed through praise and worship. But you water it with the words that come out of your mouth. You got to open up your mouth and you have to declare victory over the seed that you have just sown. You sown a significant seed and you have to call that seed blessed. You have to say to that seed, you will produce for me. You will produce on the thousand times scale. You will produce for me. You will bring back to me everything that I need. You have to say it on a continuous basis because you are the one who's watering your own seed. God is not watering your seed that comes out of your mouth. I'm encouraging you today. Don't let the devil mess with you today. Don't let the devil Never steal you of your peace. Don't let him steal your joy. Don't let the devil make you feel as if you are nothing and nobody. You are somebody. God created you to be somebody. You are created in his image and in his likeness. And what the enemy will do is he will come for you when you're on top. He come for you when you're on top. And that's when he thinks that your defenses are down. He comes for you when you're seeking God, when you're trying to do everything that you can to glorify God and honor God. He comes for you. But you got to say to the devil, come on, <laughs> I'm not backing down from you. Come on, I'm not running away from you. Come on, I got this. We we, we going through this. We going to handle this today. And some of you haven't drawn the line in the sand where you say, it's on today. 
You haven't drawn the line in the sand. Once you start drawing the line in the sand and you say to the devil, I ain't taking this no more. I'm not taking sickness no more. I'm not taking disease no more. I'm not taking poverty no more. I'm not taking brokenness no more. I'm not taking it where my business are not successful anymore. I'm not taking it where my church is not successful anymore. I'm not taking it anymore. Once you draw the line in the sand, now you invoke God's promises to show up in your life because you have said you ain't taking this no more. All God needs from you is for you to say yes. <laughs> Scripture says that in the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah said, I saw the Lord high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. <laughs> Here he is. He's come home from a funeral because him and King Uzziah are close and he views King Uzziah as the top of all tops as the best of all best but when he walks in the temple god shows him <laughs> that there's one greater than king uzziah and he is here in the midst the scripture says his face is covered with angels wings and the scripture says that god asked the question who will go for us and isaiah said you know i would go but i cuss everybody i hang out with it cuss i'm in sin everybody else around me is sin but because isaiah said yes here's what god does he takes, he, he has the angel go and fly and take tongues and take the coals off of, hot coals off the fire and burns the sin out of, out, of, out of Isaiah so that Isaiah could go for God. Listen to this. All he wants you to do is to say yes to him. It doesn't matter, of the, it doesn't matter the situation that you have. It doesn't matter what you're, what you're involved in. It doesn't matter if you're in sin. It doesn't matter any of these things. God already knows. So here's what God needs you to do. He needs you to just say yes to him. And when you say yes to him, you are inviting him into your life. Now he starts to clean up everything. He starts to remove things out of your life. For some of you, it'll happen instantly. Or through others of you, it'll be through the process of time. And God will remove everything. But don't you let the devil tell you that you are not serviceable, that you're not salvageable, and that you are not usable. The devil is a liar. He wants you to think that because of the things you done wrong in the past that you cannot be used and the reality is you are the very one that God wants to use take the key unlock God's strong box and let him show you his good treasure today <laughs> stop trying to figure this thing out on your own he already laid it out he already worked it out scripture tells us in John chapter 6 that we close with this that God already knows what he gonna do I'm gonna say it again scripture said God already knows what he gonna do Guess what he's not trying to do? He's not trying to ask you what does he need to do. The Bible says he already knows what he's going to do. He already knows what he's going to do. But here's what God is doing. He's just asking you to see if you know. <laughs> Bible says he, the, the people have been following Jesus all night long and the folks are hungry. And Jesus looks at the disciples and he says, Where shall we buy bread that these may eat? You need to feed these people. And the scripture says, Jesus asked the question because he himself, he already knew what he was going to do. God already knows what he's going to do about your situation. He just needs you to say yes to him. He needs you to invite him in. He already knows what he's going to do about your husband's situation. He already knows what he's going to do about your money situation. He already knows what he's going to do about your wife's situation. He already knows what he's going to do about your bank account. He already knows what he's going to do about your health. He already knows what he's going to do about your business. He already knows what he's going to do about your kids. He already knows. He already knows. He already knows. He already knows. But he needs you to invite him in. He already knows. There's some of you now, you need to be promoted on your job but you have not invited God in to promote you you're mad at other people because they're getting promoted and I don't know who I'm talking to right here but you're mad at other people because they're getting promoted and you are not let me help you today you have to command people to be removed out of your way the promotion is yours you have to command folk to move and if you don't command folk to move they will stay in your way and how do you command folk to move you got to speak to the mountain like the bible said and command it to be removed you got to go to god in prayer and you got to say god you got to give me grace for this now i'm supposed to be promoted but they keep putting everybody else in front of me so you don't get mad at them but you go to him and when you go to him things shift things change things turn around for you because god knows what he's gonna do he just needs your permission to move and many of you are not giving god permission to move he already knows <laughs> use the keys that god has given you use the keys that he's given you to unlock his strong box when you unlock the box you're gonna find out everything that you need is in the box <laughs> that's my time for y'all today listen let me give a shout out to the cowboy fans yesterday they won yesterday uh they beat you know the philadelphia eagles they beat the miami dolphins they beat uh, uh washington redskins and the new york giants so they beat 
four bottom tier teams, you know, so praise the Lord. Uh, but ain't nothing like the, the 49ers. Ain't nothing like the 49ers. Ain't nothing like the 49ers. That's why I got my cup today. Because <laughs> we 6 it all, baby. <laughs> We six and oh, nothing like the 49ers. So listen, if you're not repping the 49ers, repping the 49ers, I don't know if we're going to let you stay on this broadcast. No, I'm just kidding. I love y'all. appreciate y'all. But again, my condolences go out uh, to the Powell family today. My heart goes out to them. Um, my childhood friends, uh, mother, Isidore Powell and Tony Powell's mother, went home to be with the Lord a few uh, a few days ago. Miss Irene Holmes' sister, um, Miss Shirley Powell's our sister-in-law, Miss Edna Powell's sister-in-law, and Miss C.P. Little's auntie went home to be with the Lord. And, um, man, keep the family in prayer, all right? Y'all know how we feel about that, how I feel about that, especially people that I grew up with. You know, these are family to me. I wouldn't be where I am today and wouldn't be who I am today had it not been for the people from the IBM. So um, keep that family in prayer. Also, uh, I just saw Louis Starks on here today. I know that his family member went home to be with the Lord. Uh, a few weeks ago as well too so let's keep his family in, in prayer as well that's these are all people from the ibm so shout out to them today uh love y'all appreciate y'all linda yates is on today good to see you man they enjoying belize right now i don't think they want to come home <laughs> you know and i know i know if miss karen yates is watching she's doing a lot of worshiping <laughs> let me quit let me quit let me get off here before my wife get me <laughs> let me get off here Listen, I gotta get somebody there day today. I gotta get my, I gotta get somebody there day today. Listen, the day goes out to the Powell family today. We've never done this before, but I give the entire day to the Powell family today. Miss C. P. Little, Miss Irene Holmes, Miss Shirley Powell, Miss Edna Powell. It is their day. They have experienced a lot of tragedy just this month alone. So the day goes out to them. It is their day. All right, it's their day. So show them some love on here today. Uh, it's their day today. We want to encourage them and cheer them up. All right. It's their day today. All right. So let me pray. I'm praying today that you will utilize the keys that God gave you. I'm praying that you will utilize the keys that God gave you. All right. Hey, uh, Miss Jennifer Smith is on. You know, Miss Jennifer don't like it when I be when I be way out there like that. But I got to show her some love. I got to give her my pound today. I love you, girls. So good to see you. All right. Let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person who's watching me today. I ask in Jesus' name, God, that you would pour your favor out on them, that you would open new doors for them. But most of all, God, grant them hope today. Their hope is built on nothing less than you and Jesus Christ and your righteousness today. And so, God, I ask in Jesus' name, God, that you would take your people to another level. I pray for the Stark family today. I pray for the Powell family today. And I ask in Jesus' name that you would comfort them, that you would keep them, and that you would add to their lives today. And God, I thank you that even as I'm praying today, God, that you would help them to remember the good times, God. But most of all, that they will remember that their loved ones rest safely in your arms today. And God, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Now, Father, we pray that you would help us to utilize the keys that you have given us so that we might open doors, God, that has once been locked. God, thank you, Lord, for just elevating us and promoting us and putting master keys in our hands today. Now, Father, I pray for the country of Belize. I pray for every Belizean citizen who's watching me. I ask in Jesus' name that you would pour your favor out on them and that you would increase them and add new, new opportunities to them now in the name of Jesus. And God, I give you praise and glory for it. Now, Father, I pray for my town, Itabina, Mississippi. I pray for my town's peace and prosperity. I pray for my town's healing and deliverance. And God, I thank you that even as I'm praying now, God, you are shifting things in Itabina. And you're taking my town to a new level in you. And God, I give you praise and glory for it. Now, Father, I pray in Jesus' name for the Delta. Pour your favor out on the Delta, God. Bless the Delta as a whole. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, hey, get your seed in the ground today. Get your seed in the ground. Shout out to our Instagram audience. Thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, Miss Abigail Yates is on. Shout out to you. Thank you for letting me be a part of the funeral, Miss Abigail Yates, by streaming live. You allowed me to see it. So thank you so much for being for doing that. I appreciate you. All right. Shout out to Miss Bambi as well. Good to see you. Miss Hines is on today. Shout out to you. Listen, get your seed in the ground. Go to our website at kingdomlifefaithcenter.org. Don't let this day go by without you getting a seed in the ground. All right. So get your seed in the ground today. Go to our website, kingdomlifefaithcenter.org. Get your seed in the ground today. Please do that. Don't let this day go by without you sowing a seed, all right? So get it in the ground. You can give your tithe, your offering. 
See, see, Karen Ye said, worshiping like crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Let me quit. <laughs> Let me stop. <laughs> get, get your seat get your in the ground today. <laughs> Let me quit. Get your seat in the ground today. Get your seat in the ground today. Go to our website at kingdomlifefaithcenter.org and click on the online giving button there. You can give your tithe, your offering. Uh, if you're watching in the backyard and you're sowing because of that, <laughs> get your seed in the ground today. Get it in the ground today. <laughs> click on the online giving button there and sow it. And um, hey, watch the Lord take your life to another level, all right? Hey, if you want to sow directly to me through the Cash App, and cash app is the dollar sign Pastor Perryman. Again, the cash app is the dollar sign Pastor Perryman. Get that seed in the ground today. Hey, your life will be tremendously blessed, and I thank you so much. So shout out to our, our Instagram audience who's tuning in today. Hey, love you guys. Appreciate y'all. We'll see y'all again tomorrow morning. Y'all be blessed in Jesus' name, and we'll see y'all tomorrow. Be blessed.